Well, hi everyone, and welcome to the uh, let's see, it's the uh, noon hour, I guess, here um, Eastern Standard Time. This is the um, Education Impact Day 2016, hosted by Designers for Learning, and we are so excited to have a representative from Digital Promise, Patty Constantakis. And Patty, I don't know if you are representing Digital Promise today, or if it's just Patty. <laughs> I don't know yeah, how so you. <laughs> Um, but you want to just um, just give us a quick overview of Digital Promise as well as yourself and um, why you're interested in education. Oh my goodness! Yes, well. Yeah, that, you can you can that, try that one. That answer right hold, there is too big. Yeah, well, take the whole time. Yeah, exactly. I've done education all of my life, so it's and it's just it's just a passion, and it always will be. And that's how that goes. But um, so Digital Promise, let me tell you a little bit about us. Um, kind of as a whole, our um, our mission. So, number one, we're a nonprofit. Um, we've been around for about five years. We, um, our mission is really to spur innovation, and really we mean technology innovation in education. And so that's a super broad mission. Um, but we kind of do it in in various ways. We've got, and and, and by and large, most of what we do at General Promise is actually in the K twelve space. But um, all of what we're doing there applies to the adults as well. Um, we, do, we have different kinds of initiatives. Kind of what I would say is our, our goal is really to bring educators, researchers, and technology entrepreneurs together to really produce um, the best kinds of quality learning experiences that we can. So my role at Digital Promise is really focused on adult learners. And so for us, that means the lowest skilled of adults that are out there, you know, we, and I'm sure you guys have already gone through this if we're several hours into this, but in terms of, <laughs> you know, the staggering numbers and so on, in terms of what we're talking about in our population and the, of the, the learners who are really in need of um, expanded learning opportunities is really how I would put this. Um, our, so what we're, what we're trying to do, let me see, I have a couple of notes. Oh. Uh, part of what um, part of the focus on technology or the sort of our, our our reasoning behind the focus on technology in particular with adult learners but I think this is really true with kind of the, the spectrum of learners is really trying to think about you know how much how much potential technology has to expand access and really to um, think about personalization so in, in a lot of ways some of the work we do is really focused on that um, because I mean as you again probably have already talked about here um, technology is um, you know the, the, the lives of adults um, at this point, right? Super busy. Um, the way education is de is delivered um, in educate in adult education programs, it's typically in person. It's typically a program that's you know scheduled from X time to X time. And if you've got a busy life, getting there is pretty tricky, right? So, um, what can we do with technology to to really help expand that access? And then the other kind of key issue in adult. Ed is, you know, all of the differing kinds of levels of folks um, who come through that door, right? They all come with different experiences. They all come with different backgrounds, different language backgrounds, blah, 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 right? So um, how do we, how could we use technology to really do a better job personalizing that kind of um, experience of the learning experience for them? So those are kind of some of the things we, we are concerned about and where we want to make an impact, as it were. Um, but we, I would say, and, it, and you know, stop me, Jennifer, if you're about to ask me all these questions, but we have, um, we kind of, we have four kind of main things that we do at Digital Promise, or at least my initiative does at Digital Promise. Um, kind of, and I can tell you more about them because there's plenty in here. But the first one is we we do um, we build networks. So we we try to build networks of educators, researchers, and developers, um, so that we can share best practices and um, ideas and sort of all of that kind of thing. Um, we also try to do a pretty good job of providing resources, information, and resources um, to those networks and kind of everybody in general. So our website is trying to grow and be some of that. Um, we try to do advocacy and um, some of that is at the policy level, but a bunch of it actually is with investors and with entrepreneurs and developers who, um, who um, 
you know, who have been up to this point kind of ignoring this market. So what can we do to get people interested here? And then kind of the, the, the fourth yet not last thing is, you know, what can we do within all of what we're doing to identify sort of key challenges and issues that we maybe can dive deeper into with different kinds of projects, if that makes sense. Um, you know, the professional development issues, there's a whole bunch of kinds of things. And uh, so we're hoping to expand the work that we do by diving in deep into challenges and, and, and helping figure things out, if that makes sense. And I'll stop there. Shows, well, no, yeah, and I, I, I hope, hope this segues into what you're talking about, but um, where I was introduced um, to you, Patty, we've had a couple of great events that I've attended, and um, I, I, we talked also um, when we had breakfast, I believe, one day, talking about this whole idea of like almost a match.com, bringing together all these different groups, so you've got the developers who maybe aren't as familiar with and the needs and the, um, some of the strategies that may be used in education and instructional design and then vice versa you've got a lot of great designers who maybe aren't great developers and so bringing that together so can you maybe just now backtrack just a tad and talk a little bit about the it was about a year ago now right when you had um, the five city initiative focused exclusively on adult education which was one of the at least for me anyway one of the first um, spotlights that I've seen shine very brightly on adult education, bringing all these community, communities together. Would you mind just spending a couple minutes talking about that event and, you know, what the outcome of that had been? Sure. Um, so, interestingly, that event was, was, happened about a month or so into my arriving at Digital Promise. So it was a really fun event to try to do. But the idea was to try to understand, try to bring together, as you say, Jennifer, the, um, you know, how to educators, researchers, and developers, and get them focused around the idea of adult education and just adult education. How could we get, like, there's lots and lots of um, folks out there, I, I want to say current developers, people who are already working in ed tech, and then there are people who, who have this social entrepreneur mindset, too, um, that you kind of go, well, how could we get some of those people focused on adult education. And so we sort of dreamed up the notion, you know, we, we wanted to kind of do something like a hackathon, you know, um, except not actually be a hackathon. So we called it a designathon or a design day. And so what we wanted to do was bring people in around the country to really think about what are the, what are the key issues and challenges around um, adult education and what kinds of products might we actually design for them and what would be key features that would be needed and, and, and so on there. So we did a, and that's why Jennifer, you ended up in one of our cities, but um, we kind of did it virtually. We took, we took um, advantage of the technology. We had five different cities host a local piece of it and then what we did was like at the beginning of that particular day we brought everybody together with kind of a kickoff piece on zoom just like this and then um, disconnected each of the local cities then did some design work they spent two or three hours doing some design work and um, even kind of had a little bit of a competition um, locally to sort of see who were you know of the of what was going on in the room which which two did we want to share out at the end of the day with the other locations and so we did that at the end of the day um, and which we actually sort of did pitches to um, a couple of investors to just sort of get a sense of of what they were thinking about too and so um, we had I don't know we had we had almost 150 participants um, probably you know which puts you at about 30 to 40 in each of our five locations it was in San Francisco Chicago Boston New York and DC DC yeah um, so, and yeah um, and it was super interesting we had a great mix of people so we definitely had educators I think what was what the feedback that we got um, number one we got some good cool ideas and designs number two um, one of the things we also were trying to do was get people to think about applying and entering or whatever the X Prize competition. I don't know how many of you guys yeah. know about yeah, it, but I can talk about it, that in, in a minute. You talk about it and I'll pull that up real quick when you keep, keep going. Yeah, so that was number two, but let me come back to that in just a second. Sure. Um, and that actually happened. And then we, we also really wanted, um, we wanted to kind of cross pollinate, right? We wanted 
we wanted that empathy piece you were just talking about, right? Developers, like that's one of the things folks are, you know, typically missing. Um, they have all the good intentions in the world and they have the coolest, neatest features that they're thinking about, like, oh, we could do this and we could do that when you start talking about needs. But how is it, but like, how do we really help them understand the basic needs of learners? Now, I have to say, we didn't have very many learners in the room and we probably should have. Um, but we had some great educators who were really um, able, I think, to give the developers in the room a sense of, of, of um, how this population is unique. Um, and in a lot of ways, how the population isn't unique, which is sort of, there's, those are two good things <laughs> to know if you're a developer, if that makes sense. Um, but I can come back to the next part if you want me to. You're about to. No, well, I just wanted to also just we've got some comments Add to it. In, the, in the text chat. Um, this whole idea of bringing together, we talked in several different times during different sessions. Uh, adult education is tends to be this little island, and, and those that work in in it are really in their own little tiny tiny islands. Often, unfortunately, yes. You know, not going to quote an office or whatever where you may work with others, and so I think a lot of people in you you mentioned this last event that was the combo virtual, kind of a hybrid virtual as well as face-to-face. -face. And then you also hosted one here locally in Chicago that I attended. And it brought together a, a lot of adult education specialists from libraries or literacy centers or people like myself doing whatever, however you define what I do. And um, I just think this idea of um, recognizing it even as a community is so important because just, higher ed just has a definition. You get it. You're like, you get it. Okay, there are these higher ed institutions and they have structures. And that's just not really how things happen in adult education. Yep. And um, I just thought that was kind of a, a cool cool aspect of it. And then the part that you mentioned as well, just uh, getting the, the different constituencies to understand what they can bring to the table. And that was the really cool part of the kind of the hackathon that you mentioned that we all very quickly came up with a need, very quickly came up with a, a nap napkin idea of a solution. And they weren't bad, even though they were fast. It, it was something that I think could be actionable for many of them. Um, mm -hmm. So I just think for those of you that are also thinking about ways to host an event like this, um, I thought it was a really cool. It event. was fun. I'm, I really, I'm like, I want to do another one, but I haven't found the funding to do another one yet but it would be really fun there's it nothing word again right exactly <laughs> so yeah please go ahead and talk about the uh the adult literacy the x prize because that was yeah, quite a big deal yeah yeah and part of the reason that i think you know and i'm not exactly sure the full mix of the participants on here today but i'm sure some of you are um instructional designers etc and so um there are ways in which um I, if I would say this right away, instructional designers who understand this population, if I could connect you with developers, it would be so amazing. So the X Prize is the first place that I've um, really had some, what I would call good success working with folks who are actually focused on the adult learner. Um, so the adult literacy X Prize. So I don't know. How, in, you said you might bring it up here, Jennifer, or not, but the X Prize Foundation in general is a is an interesting organization if you haven't heard of it. But they are they're concerned with grand challenges. Like they want to find ways to incentivize people to come up with big ideas for grand challenges. And they spend some time figuring out what those are. They're they're most famous for like their first one, which was like a space one. And so like SpaceX and some of those came out of that. And they they design the X Prize as a competition so that ultimately people compete um, to win in a, a prize. And it's a pretty significant prize um, in whatever area or discipline that they're they have this prize focused on. So they basically came up with an it, it launched i think they launched the um the competition of the whole thing last august um it was an adult literacy x prize it's really designed to be um that what they want is an app <laughs> or yeah basically an app that really shows like could really really help adults who are low literate actually advance in their literacy. Um, so they have all these, these constraints around the whole thing and everything else, but, um, but, but the, what's been cool about it is, um, and I'm not, maybe not explaining it well. So 
they launch this prize, they invite teams to come join, join and compete with it. And then they have a whole series of things that those teams have to do in order to win. So they launched in August. Teams were supposed to sign up by December. So coming out of our design-a-thons and hackathons, we had like 14 different teams um, actually sign up, sign up from our thing, which was pretty good, but total for the XPRIZE. Yeah, it was, they said it was their single biggest recruiting event, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but total, they have like 85 teams um, currently participating, like currently competing for this, um, which is cool. Um, see, and I people. think also, um, <laughs> yeah, I did show my, my husband keeps popping okay. in. He wants his phone back. I'm using it as my hotspot right now. <laughs> wow, wants, I'm impressed. He wants his phone back. Sorry, yeah. you can't have it. Um, yeah, but, but so, I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, I was going to say, um, even though the team formation has concluded, I have been receiving bits and pieces. If you are, if I know more about it too, yeah. Yeah, if you do have an adult ed classroom that you could continue to um, maybe be part of their project as testing out their resources or something like that. Do you know anything, any pieces of that at all? Yeah, so there's plenty. So where they are in their stage now is, Yes, the team formation has happened, um, but yes, most of them are right now in a place where they really are trying to test out their um, their stuff with their stuff, their app with real users. And so I've been doing what I can to try to connect them with different kinds of programs um, because most of them don't have good access to it at all. Um, and yes, are more real users needed? Yes, the answer is yes to, to that question as I see it there. Um, and I can figure out a way to, to connect some of you to some of those. Um, I can, there are ways in which we can post, they have, XPRIZE has a forum that we can get onto and post. Um, but so they're kind of in that stage. They will then conclude, um, they have to like, I guess the, their final submission of their app is March the 9th. I think that's the deadline for the like, fully formed app and with and it, and it has to meet all these constraints it has to meet it actually has to work <laughs> is what they say and there's some controversy around what work means because there's going to be a pretest and a post test um, the, and they're using as their pretest and post test the casas which is also tricky um, but there's a pretest then they would use it for a while then there would be a post test and and ideally it would work right so some of not only do they want to test it user test it with real users they want to get a little bit of that data collected to see how how it's actually working for people um, um, which actually might be a perfect segue in uh, into I was going to ask you to talk a little bit about beacon project because those are the those are the uh, adult education centers right that could you tell us a little bit about your idea of why do you have the beacon project and what what is the, what are the aims of, of focusing and spotlighting and then just describe the project a little bit in, in terms of, of what it is. Yeah, so one of the things I said when starting as, as Digital Promise is that what we wanted to do is try to build networks because really that's where the best ideas get shared um, and they, and they, and, they, and yeah, <laughs> we both share and come up with new ideas, right, um, working with other folks. So we came up, we, what we wanted to do with our Beacon, we call it our Beacon Project, and it's basically a network right now of, of adult educators around the country who are doing interesting things with technology at this point. And they're all kinds of, and, and as we know in adult education, you know, this isn't just, you know, one type of program. There's several kinds of programs going on. We've got libraries, we've got union workers, we've got, um, uh, you know, whole cities, we've got all, several different kinds of things. And, and if you were go on our website, I think our Beacon Project says we have like eight or nine folks, but we're expanding this year. And so we've probably up to about 14, but we just haven't gotten them on our website yet. But um, there are folks who are doing interesting things um, with technology and then that are, are willing to experiment with technology. So some of, some of what, they, what, what, we, what we try to help facilitate is number one, sharing with each other around the country. So we try to do um, Zoom meetings with folks like this. Um, some of the convenings that, that Jennifer talked about before, we've invited folks to there to, to talk through some of those things. Um, but then we also try to connect them with, with more technology. So they've been nicely kind of test beds um, for us. So we're able to bring in, like I've connected them with several different um, XPRIZE teams so that the um, teams could use, you know, get their users um, 
to do some testing for them. Uh, they also, we, one of the other key things, and I think this is new for you, Jennifer, I haven't told you about this, um, but one of the other issues about tech, using technology in, in adult ed is that we don't know much about how it works. Um, nobody's really ever done any any kind of evaluation research or any kind of any kind of research if that makes sense people kind of do hey I'll try it and then they have no real good idea of, of what those outcomes ought to be or you know what they're really looking for in that right so we're trying to work with some of our beacons to really think through what would it look like to put together a pilot um, like a, a set of piloting procedures that we could share with other people, right? So that, and, and all that really might be is just a series of questions like where you start at the beginning and you say, hmm, I found, I want, you know, what I'd like to do with my students is um, work with them more on math. Okay, so how might I do that? And what, what's the outcome that you might want there? And then how might you evaluate a good pilot? So we've got some specific pilots going on right now within our beacons um, that we're working with um, with specific product developers we're actually gathering the data we're actually helping them you know really look through it and all that kind of stuff so trying to trying to just get more systematic about the way we use technology in adult ed and have it not just be like eh, let's just try it you know um, and again, this whole idea of just uh, about sharing best best practices in these little across islands mm -hmm. right yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, a no, question yeah. came up in the um, question came up in the text chat regarding access, and um, in, in, I think this question really was um, related to internet access. And the one that was met, John Schinker, who's helping us manage the text chat today, mentioned everyone on. I believe at your Chicago event, a rep representative from everyone on was there. Do you know enough about that? I I wish I could. I, I know enough to put the link in, but um, do you know enough about what they do to add some context to the question? Or? Unfortunately, I don't really know that much about it. Um, you know, I know enough to know what they do and why why they're important, you know, um, but I don't know enough to know about six, their successes and failures, as it were, right, with this particular population, unfortunately. It's something I should look into. A little bit. I, I know, and, and um, I, I, the encouraging thing is that um, I did sit at a table at, at your event, the event here in Chicago, and she was one of the people in our group. We were discussing a, a topic that you had raised for the for the group to dissect, and um, she was very much interested in working with adult education um, centers and uh, big or small. So I know she's the woman that I know her name escapes me right now. So the link that we put in the text chat for um, everyone on, I believe the question was from from Sullivan. He was asking about. Out. Um, you know how, how do we do this we're talking about bringing technology to populations that probably don't have great technology and don't have great internet and then she did seem to fill a, at least a small piece of the puzzle with um, the support that they're offering so that's something to consider mm -hmm. um, and then we did have a question from Lisey Weiss in the um, in the Q and a if you could give some examples of any apps that have um, come forth, and I, I, I can queue one up for you, the, the cell ed, right, <laughs> would certainly be one, but uh, an example of an app that would work to serve adult learners. Could you maybe share with us an example that we could, could look at or think about? Right, I mean, have you have you shared about cell ed yet? I didn't, I just kind of threw that one out there before, I, before my mind went someplace else, but yeah, and do you, other examples would be great if you could think of any. Yeah, well, so, um, yeah, there's there are different kinds of them. Um, apps, apps, are not there they're not that many out there um solid is probably one of the best ones that are out there um there is um there's several other language um programs um but they really are more um computer based and a little less um app based they're um we know of a couple, I'm like drawing a blank, which is really funny at the moment. I'm like, because I'm trying to like, wait. That's why I wanted to get sell out of there before I forgot. Because I, I know, but it. hang on, let me, I'm going to run to my, to our, to my, because since I'm sitting at a computer, I can run to my website and go look. Um, we've got on our website um, a whole, we have a whole product page um, that I could, that, Oh, you know, we probably the West Street. Tried to have queue up, and um, just as you're looking for that, um, uh, at a session, I believe it 
Coabe that you sponsored, I believe, Patty, that we had, you had the representative from Sela there. And what's interesting is when we think of apps, you know, sometimes we, again, much what, what we've talked about with Lisa and with Heidi earlier, we think of kind of the high-end jazzy technology. And Cell Ed is um, a lot of the, the things they, they're using are using like text messaging and, you know, some of the more uh, basic features of a phone versus necessarily something that would require a smartphone. Yeah. And I think that, that piece is really key and important. Um, trying to, and I think that session that we hosted at Coabe was really um, uh, anchored by um, Allison Escher Weber, who I don't know if, how many of you guys know her, uh, but she's been, she's been working with Cell Ed and she's done a whole lot of different kinds of work with adult learners and is really a big proponent for mobile learning. Um, because she believes in the access that it gives, which I completely agree with her. And her other big, big point is, you know, we don't necessarily need fabulous, cool, whizzy features, right? We need it to just basically work. And so how can we use, um, you know, the basics of text messaging and the basics of, and the, and the good thing about text messaging is, it's assuming again on what your plan is, but there are ways that if you can use the phone as a phone and not, and not have incurred data charges, that really helps in this particular world. The other thing that's really interesting in their finding in Cell Ed, Cell Ed in particular, and there are others that are finding this in, in, in smaller ways, but not necessarily in an app itself, is that, that the text messaging is becoming like this really nice way to provide support. Like one of the big issues that we see too, and we have another report that we just did um, around how in this world of mobile learning and online learning, can you actually provide the kind of support and scaffolding that these learners really need? And the couple of ways that people are really exper experimenting with is how do you use text messaging as kind of that relationship with a mentor? And then how do you use maybe something like Skype or FaceTime or something to that effect where you're actually having face-to-face one-on-one kinds of, of discussions. Building th those things, and what's interesting about the XPRIZE, one of the XPRIZE um, constra constraints, whatever, rules, whatever, requirements, that's it. The requirements from the XPRIZE <laughs> is that there has to be some kind of interaction um, that's built into these apps. So it can't just be an app where you, you know, just are, you know, work completely by yourself. They're actually looking for some kind of social interaction um, and they want to see that feature built in. Most are going to do that with text messaging from everything I can tell. Um, but there's something to that, I think. Oh, absolutely. And I was just looking um, on your website just to see which link um, you might have been, um, it, maybe, I don't think you put it in, but the, um, is it the spotlight on practices or the? No, it's called the, it's the product in PD directory. Oh, okay, perfect. I'll, I'll grab that one really quick. Um, and, and again, what I'm just so excited about having you on and Digital Promise on, it, it's just a great place to see what's happening, you know, kind of, I keep jo joking every time I see the, the match.com of, <laughs> mm -hmm. of this sphere is trying to bring uh, people together, but and I'll put this link in the chat right now, if it'll play nice with me, there we go, um, for their, uh, for the products and uh, the PD directory. Yeah, and I'll tell you on that, on this, this little directory, using the filters over on the side here of just, because there's a lot, we have a lot here, and so just figuring out how to, you know, if you're interested in math, click on the math, you know, sort by use those things and um, you can find out what you're looking for I think there this is an ever-growing this is part of that piece where I said we we're trying to provide information and resources and that kind of thing this is part of what we're trying to do on our site here is just just let people know hey you know these things could be something you would like the other the I'm seeing here at the top of this list um, remind um, it just happened to be, we happen to be featuring it today. Everybody keeps talking about this app. This is just a quick text messaging app. It, a lot of people just, what's, what's cool about it is you can broadcast to, um, you know, sort of one to many, or you can do personal chats or that kind of thing. And we've seen a lot of um, instructors really use this to give assignments, to remind them of something, to... Um, just do like the daily tip of the day, you know, those sorts of things. Um, so it's been, a, it's an interesting um, third party, kind. you know, it's like, it's not an instructional 
like there's not curriculum built in here, but it's a, it's a really nice tool that we've seen a lot of people use. And that may actually get to a question, Holly, I think it was a, not a rhetorical question. I think it might have, I think it's a real question, <laughs> but how to convert everyone's attitude towards self-directed learning, which is you know, certainly something important, regardless of what segment you're working on. Um, and it was someone part. mentioned in the chat, um, sometimes the populations we're talking about are 60 plus and may not have the tools and technologies we're talking about, or if they do, it's you know a new technology or tool. Um, and so any thoughts on that as far as, um, you know, I think you were, you're, you were getting at that as far as the self-directed aspect of it, that it doesn't necessarily have to be just you know, like the pure platform that you teach the lesson on, but it could be th those goal setting things, reminders of a quick way to get, reach a tutor or whatever it may be, that that could be the use of the technology versus. Yeah, yeah and I would say that people are, are experimenting um, with a bunch of this. Um, the, in, in Philadelphia, so one of our beacons is the, um, well, they used to be called the Mayor's Commission on Literacy in Philadelphia, but they just changed their name to the Office of Adult Education in Philadelphia. It's the city of Philadelphia, and they've got a whole slew of things that they offer their learners, one of them being kind of a purely online program that they call My Place Online. And they've had a, a pretty reasonable um, amount of success with they're low skilled learners and they even talk about it. These are fourth to sixth grade learners. I mean, they just are in terms of levels. Um, so they're low skilled learners and they've had a reasonable amount of success with two different things. And then they're experimenting with a third, but the first one being before they sit down and actually allow somebody to um, start this class, they spend some time in that place of goal setting. And so they, they take them through a little, I want to say it's a four module and they do it online, but they do it in the lab. Um, they take them through a process of here's why we're here. Are you prepared? Here's the goals. Here's your calendar, et cetera. And then, and their program allows, um, it does some of that reminding along the way to let you know what the what the what the goals were that you set along the way um they also oh i guess it's just those were kind of two things um the, the thing they're experimenting with because they did find that some of the some of the students were were faltering kind of in the middle so now what they're doing is experimenting with tutoring sessions and they want to so they're doing um both in-person tutoring sessions and virtual tutoring sessions and they and each of those so they've hired tutors to very specifically kind of man that instead of having to man and think about the whole online course if that makes sense um, they've got a teacher for that and they have tutors kind of spread around and like I said doing the virtual thing to see how yeah exactly blended tutoring <laughs> um, yeah yeah to think about yeah, the, the, you know what I mean? To, to sort of understand what that means. And they're, and they're being purposeful about it in terms of those, that tutoring. Um, and they're trying to also be um, personalized about it. So there's small tutoring groups, et cetera. So it'll be interesting to see. What I think is really great about this conversation, it comes up all the time in our adult basic education MOOC. Um, unfortunately, e-learning started out and maybe unfortunately still continues to be present a bunch of content quiz, present a bunch of content quiz. Mm -hmm. and what I hope the takeaway is from, from your session today and what we're talking about is this idea of sharing and comparing ideas take us away from that <laughs> and think about technology as a, a, the affordances, other affordances of the, the tools that can allow us to do a whole bunch of other things besides dump a bunch of content quiz, dump a bunch of <laughs> content quiz. And it is our, I guess, our fallback to do that, unfortunately, when we, when we're as designers. And I, I really thank you, Patty, for really being bringing out the, the, the beacon, you know, bringing the beacon project and the um, sharing and comparing ideas, because I think that's really where we're going to get out of that model and that mold of using online learning just as a way to go back to the old days of almost like correspondence course, where you received a, something in the mail and you sent in a your answers and then someone graded it it's just kind of a glorified way unfortunately we're seeing that too often yeah the um 
I, I will say this, that um, we still are, you know, that match.com, as you say, Jennifer, we're still kind of trying to make <laughs> our way in that direction too. So when we think about our Beacon Project and, and our building our network, what we're hoping to do kind of early in the year is start to build an online community. Not that there's not a lot of them around, right? Um, so the links group and so on, there are lots of them, but we want to kind of pull our community together um, around, um, around technology, adult education. Um, and so, and we want that community to be, you know, educators, researchers, and developers. So we're going to, we're going to try to put this together online. So we may be out, you know, inviting folks to come join that particular community um, with the idea that we're going to share best practices there and so on. So. Um, so um, we, we definitely want to let you get on with your Saturday, so we don't want to take up your time, but I do want to make sure people know how to reach you, and if you do have any appeals to our audience, if you are looking for any particular thing or, you know, classrooms or whatever it may be, um, how, what is the best way to, for people to reach you? Um, probably the best way to reach me is to email me. It's probably the easiest thing, um, which is patty, P-A-T-T-I, at digitalpromise.org. Super welcome to um, reach out to me there. Um, I think in terms of appeals, like I would love, I mean, I don't know how many, how many designers are actually on at this particular moment, but I would love to have identified folks who I maybe could put in touch with different kinds of developers and say, hey, here's some people who really understand this, this population, consider using them, like, can I match you guys together so that you're like, so that you could help put you know help develop their content and curriculum that would be really really exciting that's what that I'd like I have a background in product development and instructional design myself so I'm like ah that's what's really needed here um, so that would be a big appeal for like in terms of do reach out to me let me put you on my list so that I can do some of that for you the other thing I would say which is more than higher level and more aspirational is as you are all thinking about adults, um, we all know like that blended learning thing, there's something important to the blended learning, but thinking about how do we use technology to actually support adult learners in the way they need it from afar. So that I keep calling it support and scaffolding, but I want it to be a technology um, notion, right? They can't all come in and get tutoring. So what do we do about that? And how, you know, so, Let's continue to think about this. Let's let's do something about that. Definitely. And George brings up a great point to um, the real convenience, I guess we'll call it, of the content quiz model is it really does make it fairly easy, I guess. Well, I guess it depends on what your definition. I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking as I'm reading his question, the issue is how can you grade or indicate how learners have actually grasped the material? But I think, unfortunately, a lot of that might just be recall and not application. And I think a lot of the um, instructional strategies that we're talking about and we're hoping to get it, it, it get at is more the uh, the application and being able to do something different that you weren't able to do before which mm -hmm. inherently is tough to grade it is high, until you actually put them in the context and and say can you do this um, it is hard to grade and otherwise I think the unfortunate part of the content quiz model is we really are we tend to evaluate recall and, and can you pull back facts and figures and things that you use versus how would you actually use those facts and figures. Gosh, sure. we're getting great discussion in the chat room. This is awesome. I'm trying to, <laughs> well, trying thank to you keep so up. Much. Um, and Patty, I just really wanted to thank you from a personal standpoint. You've been a huge supporter of us right off the bat. She brought us in to do a, um, what do you call those? Your uh, the little blog posts, the short yeah. 500 posts, I believe. Um, and just to get our message out there. And it's really been really about a, a huge um, benefit for me personally to be invited to your sessions here in Chicago and just to get to meet everybody. It's really how I got to know the community. And I really Well, we love you. what you're doing. So, and please continue to do it. <laughs> Yes, and hopefully we'll have some resources here that we can bring out to your beacons and maybe they can help us <laughs> once Definitely. we get embedded and you know, have them take a, take a peek at it and see how we're doing. Absolutely. Thank you, Patty. And thanks everybody in the chat too for, for your questions. Thank you, Patty. Okay, thanks you guys. Enjoy your day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow.